Okay, so some bad news at the boss garage. We lost some footage. But it's okay. All you need to know is Lefty Lucy takes stuff apart. You don't forget about the righty tighty stuff because all the footage we lost was we removed the water pump, we removed the front timing cover, we removed the balancer. Oh boy! <coughs> That's it. Here we go. We're gonna build the short block, get into it, and then next episode, we'll be getting into the head and putting all that nice stuff back on again. So this is a um, this is what they call a dry sleeve. So I'm using this little plate here, which just catches the lip of the liner and then pushes it out. Now you can actually use a hydraulic press. It's got a whole contraption on it. The guy that I borrowed the plate from, he says it's broken. So we are resorted to some hammer action. <laughs> Yep, it is coming. Now, it's gonna fight the entire time. <laughs> so you might wanna, you know, grab a razor and do some scraping <laughs> in between banging it. So essentially what we're removing is a dry sleeve, meaning that there's no coolant up against the sleeve. And um, when we're rebuilding an engine, all we're doing is knocking the old one out and installing a new one and we have a brand new engine. So there's a couple different ways. When I was taught back in the old shop, we used to use green um, Loctite or a sleeve retainer, and that was supposed to make up all the imperfections in between. But talking to my engine builder, who does it all day, every day, he says not to use sleeve retainer. Now sleeve retainer, Loctite, does not conduct heat. So what we want is the heat to go from here into the block. Um, and that, that sleeve retainer actually prevents that. I've also had it where it dries instantly. Loctite dries when it's got zero air, when the absence of oxygen, it'll harden up. So um, when we put it in, the press can only do maybe three inches at a time. And then you need to release the tension on the hydraulics, tighten the wing nut on the press itself, and then keep pumping. And in that time, I've had the Loctite set up on me and it'll actually pull that plate um, right into the liner and destroy the liner. And I'll show you what I mean. So basically what we're doing from the bottom end is it just fits inside and this just fits inside the liner to fit down the actual bore of the engine. So um, when we've been installing them like this, um, I've actually pulled this into the, into the uh, cylinder liner itself and it destroyed the liner. So. Um, this is still the only way that we're going to pull out the engine. I've also had my neighbor who works on all his own equipment, all his own trucks, super successful. He's, he's told me that he's taken a welder and run a bead on the inside of the old liner. What happens is the weld will shrink and it'll actually pull the liner in and the liners pop right out. Now, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to hit it with a hammer and pop it out this way. Um, we're going to clean the bores and if I need to, I'll, I'll press the, uh, the, the liners back in, in my, uh, normal hydraulic press. Um, I don't like welding just one spot. It does work like a bearing race. If you've ever had trouble getting a bearing race out, you just make one whole bead all the way around the outside and it'll shrink and it'll drop right out. That's great. But, um, I don't like doing it because it does concentrate the heat in one spot in an engine that shouldn't it should be uniform now as going back to the loctite when the engine heats up this will this will be the first thing that just expands inside the block and and the uh, uh my engine builder says he's never had an issue with not putting loctite in sometimes he puts a little bead at the bottom of the sleeve just to keep it in and that's mainly so that when you're cranking the engine over uh, without the head on it putting your other pistons in that the liner doesn't pop back out again now a wet sleeve will be a lot thicker and it'll actually have O-rings on the top and the bottom and the water will go directly up against the cylinder itself. Um, lots of engines use that, cats, deer, um, and, and the list goes on and on. Um, that's also uh, a decent way. The only issue with wet liners is, um, deers were bad for it, is cavitation. And as, as the piston is going down, it's actually creating a vibration um, up against the liner and what it's doing is it's pushing the coolant away 
And because the coolant has nowhere to go, it takes a piece of the steel with it. And then all of a sudden, uh, you'll one day you'll you'll just have a hole in there with coolant pushing into your uh, into your on top of your piston. If you crank your engine over, it's got nowhere to go. You hydrolock it and you bend a rod. It gets expensive fast. So um, if you have an engine with a coolant filter, usually there's nothing to filter in coolant. But what it does is actually add an additive that that coats up against the liners and as the piston's going it's pushing that that uh, that film away rather than pulling the steel away and it's to prevent cavitation that's what i was taught that's what i was told that's what i believe because i've seen it um <laughs> but uh i know people are going to argue no it coolant fil filter filters your oil no it releases a, a lubricant um, if I'm wrong, definitely comment down below if you make coolant filters, if you are the engineer that's done that, definitely comment down below as to if I'm wrong, but I'm going to stick with that theory. Um, and we are going to knock out the rest of these liners, because my hand's taking a break, and uh, we can go back to hitting, so here we go. Pitch is changing, it's getting easier. Okay, so this is the liner, and you can see a little spot there, but other than that, it's pretty uniform throughout. Now, um, if this did have uh, Loctite on it, there is zero chance of you tapping that out with a hammer. Um, we had the hydraulic press on there on engines that have had the sleeve retainer on it, and it sounds like a shotgun going off when that initial crack comes out. and you're looking at that gauge on the needle and it's going up and you're like, yeah, <laughs> scary stuff. But um, uh, this is no problem, it topped out fine. Um, basically we're gonna knock the other two out and then it's just clean, 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 clean. And then when the engine's clean, you clean it again and then we'll start reassembling. So here we go. So I'm not just beating relentlessly on this, I do have a a nice little spacer on it so I don't damage this nice puck. So none of those comments, keep them to yourself. So we have our liners out. Now it's just time to inspect everything, clean it. So ball hone works, uh, three, a three hone works as well. Uh, we just wanna make a nice even slow cleaning after we've sandpapered or emery cloth the whole thing. Um, don't get too carried away and definitely lubricate it. Uh, the lubrication keeps it from bouncing and, and doing anything you don't want to. So a couple times up and down and it's important to have the same protrusion on each cylinder. The ring will actually seat on that uh, liner itself. To have them all sit in the same spot is very critical. Oh, Blackjack the Boss has his own Instagram. We'll take a uh, razor and clean off the last of the liner now that it's empty. We don't want to take any material off, we just want to clean up the last little bit of uh, whatever's left behind. We'll use a, uh, a sharpening stone for a knife that uh, a guy named Benny, Mechanical Stig, taught me. Um, and uh, that did a really nice job on the surface of the deck. Okay, we've got our box of parts here. We've got pistons all wrapped up, installed on the new connecting rods. We got a cylinder head that's been completely resurfaced, cleaned, washed, decked, and good to go. And my block is nice and clean. We've got our bores for our cylinders nice and clean. Um, all the gasket material removed. So we're gonna blow it out one more time to make sure that there's no filings in the, in the holes. Um, and we'll wash down this, these bores one more time and then drop our cylinders in. The cylinders are in my freezer uh, because it's only about uh, freezing outside. So minus 18 in the freezer there. So they'll shrink, so they'll drop in nicer. Let's see, we've got chicken fingers, french fries, frozen shepherd's pie, and oh, there's my liner. Ready to bring the block over to the press to get set up for the cylinders in case they don't drop in nice. And uh, here we go.
Now we want to check our protrusions, so just do the dial indicator, 40 thou there. Compare them to each other, it's about 40 if they're all the same, there's not a whole lot you can do. And they're all within 3 4 thou of each other, I'm okay with that. Alright, so we've got our block upside down again. First thing we're going to do is put our cam bearing back in again, and I say one because there is only one cam bearing. There's a hole in it, you see that? That has to line up with an oil hole in the block. There are no other cam bearings, the rest are just on steel, and I guess they figured cam probably runs at 1000 RPM most of its life, maybe 1100 RPM, we don't need bearings, and that's why in the famous words of Matt Happel, don't look at your cam bearings and they won't be bad. <laughs> They're not that important, <laughs> but we're going to change this one anyway. Here we go. Need to keep in mind too that there is a forward and a back. If you put the oil hole towards the front, it still won't line up. So make sure that it's towards the back and that it lines up ever so nicely. solid lifters meaning that we'll have to do a valve set before we get it to run I'm just using a little assembly lube on the face of it on the sides so wonderful Half the bearings have these slots in them, and those are for the oil passages. The other half is solid. Solid end goes in the caps, the open end goes in the block. Get that backwards, and your block won't last 10 minutes. Now you'll notice, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that has a 10 thou on it. So these are 10 thou undersized bearings which means that because they took the material off the crankshaft these bearings are thicker making the inside diameter smaller so it is an undersized bearing not an oversized bearing they don't make oversized bearings because it's hard to make a crankshaft bigger <laughs> These are the thrust washers. When you're stepping on the clutch, you're actually pushing on the crankshaft, and these keep the crankshaft within uh, proper operating limits. So um, these grooves go to the outside, so you can put a little bit of oil on the inside, and the only purpose for that is to hold them in place until you have the crank in. You can use grease as well. Now, oh, it's not a body. It's not a dead cat. It's not a pig that we're gonna roast. <laughs> That's a brand new crankshaft. Make sure to not hit the journals with a knife. Now, I don't have to wash these because it has been washed twice, thrice. Double check, triple check, make sure that all the oil galleries don't have any shavings in it. Not even gonna try and touch this actually, I'm just gonna put it in. Oh, so beautiful. I'm not gonna lubricate that one because I'm gonna use some plastic gauge on that. We'll tighten it down and we'll check and make sure that everything is within spec. Now if there's any doubt if you forget um, which way the cap went on, most of the time you can see the little indent left behind as to where the other tab is. So the tabs are on the same side, so it goes this way. plastic gauge is this little piece of plastic and you put it on your bearing journal you torque it to spec it'll squish it and the spacing however wide it squishes it tells you how much clearance is in between this has been around probably 100 years still works perfect here we go 
put a little bit of oil in the threads, on the threads of the bolt and on the back of the head, and that gets a more accurate torque. We'll start in the middle and then work our way out. So that's just to bottom it out. Now's a good time to just turn it, make sure it still turns. If there was an issue, then it would already be jammed up. Take this one back off. And now we can check it. We've got three thou, which is absolutely perfect. You want about three to five thou, two to five thou is, is acceptable. You want some oil to go through, but not too tight. Right, here we go. Okay, ready for our pistons. We are going to put some bearings in there. Still keep them all in the same spot other than number four so this is my number four rod there's a groove there i got damaged this one that had the spun bearing so we got a new connecting rod brand spanking and new the uh machinist would have put the pistons on the right way they have an arrow pointing towards the front and you can see that that's an arrow so do that we are going to soak these in oil just so that the oil gets behind the rings so we got a nice smoky start when we start. We'll put the bearings in there and we'll also plastic gauge one or two of these, especially number four. Okay, so our piston has one, two, three, four, five rings. So what I like to do is put the gaps on the end of the piston pins. Your piston rocks back and forth and all the pressure is gonna be on that side or that side, I don't know, doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, we're putting the one ring on this side like this on the pin here take the other one next one put it as far away on the other side as we can and then we'll take this ring and put it on the other side of the pin right there we'll go back to the other side that gap is at that pin and then we'll go to this one and the gap is right there make sense we'll dip this in some oil let that oil get nicely right behind the rings got a little ATF in there an old ATF container mixed with 1540. Good and lubricating. We'll let that run down. Don't squeeze it, the connecting rod, to deform it. We just want to hold it. And then we'll take our piston ring compressor. I hope it's big enough. And tighten up all those rings so nicely. Oh, I squeeze all that oil out. Connecting rod bolts. Here's the theory. Um, buy new ones. <laughs> I've had one International 574 blow up on me because I told them I ordered all my parts. I forgot to order the connecting rod bolts and it said that it, they needed to be replaced. I went back to my boss and said, I'm sorry, we need to order the connecting rod bolts. He said, that's just a sales gimmick. Don't worry about it, put it together. It lasted six months and we got a rod through the block. So I replaced the bolts. Cheap insurance. Oh, so nice. Good stuff to uh, think that you're bleeding. I am bleeding. <laughs> it's hard to tell. All right, got number one. Get all out. Crank journal. Here's a little squirty squirty of oil. That's oil. There you go. Arrow facing forward, bearing on, lubricating grease. I didn't end up getting a new stud. I just cut the weld off the top. It's a little bit shorter, but it's perfectly okay. Gasket says top front. So obviously that goes this way. Look at that. I don't know if that's where my studs go. I don't think it is. 
Make sure that the holes are clean, that there's no oil or coolant in their holes. If you didn't turn it upside down, you'll hydro lock it and you could crack the block. Don't do that. So here's my head. Now comes the question, did he paint it? Because we were always told to paint the engine when we rebuilt the engines at the old shop. I always thought it looked like crap because you have a perfectly good brand new painted engine on a crappy old rusty tractor. It didn't look good at all. <laughs> I don't think he did. But we are ready to just drop this on. It's nice and clean. Pressure checked, triple checked, and double checked again. I like my machinist. Look at that, spotless. Well, that's not right. Son of a gun. I knew I'd get it right eventually. Basically, just keep moving it until it's in the right spot. Nice thing about these engines is basically it only goes together one way. Oh yeah, the front's facing that way and the tractor is facing the other way. I'll blame it on that. That looks better. All right, we've got our short block completely assembled. We've got our cylinder head sitting on top. We're gonna stop right there and we're gonna do just a video on the cylinder head, which is coming up next. We'll show you how to torque the head down properly and set the valves, the rockers, all that fun stuff. We'll talk a little bit about what the machine shop did, but that will be uh, a good standalone video for somebody who runs into just a head gasket issue on one of these tractors. From there, we'll go on to reassembling the front and the back and all the fun stuff on the side. Uh, timing up the injection pump and the balancer on the bottom and then we'll throw it back in the tractor The rad is pretty well clean. I dropped that off a long time ago But made a made a mistake of saying no rush But I think that's washed and cleaned and pressure tested to make sure that that won't fail and we run into an overheating issue I've got a new water pump coming and new rad hoses. So everything to keep this engine in brand new shape is uh, is all set and ready to go on top of that, a brand new oil pressure sensor. We're not gonna use that line anymore. So, thanks for watching. Stick around, comment down below on anything that I've missed or anything you do different. Um, there's a lot of different ways to build an engine. One person gets taught one way, one person gets taught another, and it's nice to hear everybody's kind of, this is why I do it, and this is why it works, especially with like the, the sleeve retainer on the, uh, on the sleeves. Um, so comment down below if you've had any experience, and uh, stick around for the next videos. So, here we go. There you are.